Welcome to our third part of this mini-series and in this tutorial we'll just show you how to render our scene out, which settings to use, how to get like the best quality and then we will do just some little post editing in Photoshop just to give it a little bit more of spice to that whole image and yeah we will go from something like that to something like that you know like the glass looks a little bit more cleaner we have a little bit more colors in the shadows and the highlights also like this grain effect and also in the background this kind of light this is more or less what we did so we have our nice looking render here first of all we go to uh, those settings here and again like path tracing you know it's already very important and max samples yeah you just have to see like what's working you just have to see like what is enough like in this case 1000 is absolutely enough because yeah we will also activate the denoise and the octane denoise is very good it doesn't make sense to go much higher because it just will take much longer and we won't get so much more better quality so yeah like when you're doing stills that's not so important but especially when you're doing like animations you have like to find like this uh, sweet spot so yeah diffuse depth and um, also on seven because yeah if we see here of course if we go very uh, down like even there we don't see really a, a difference so yeah but specular depth is very important so we can make it a little bit higher I always do it a little bit higher when i use glass uh, scatter depth is uh, not important because we don't have uh, subsurface scattering uh, sometimes ray epsilon sometimes you have some uh, weird shading issues uh, when you use your models for example you have like a, a bevel and you have like the straight corners even that you are have beveled corners and that's or sometimes you use a, um, a model which is full of uh, triangles and then you have like this some um, little issues and then you just can play a little bit with this ray epsilon and yeah what's very important again like the gi clamp we don't need one million one is or ten is enough and also adaptive sampling like you can play with those uh, values here around to get like this absolute last bit of um, of time saving but in most of the cases I'm just using an adaptive sampling because it is already helping like uh, a lot. So yeah, then we just go to output. The resolution, yeah, we will just go, I don't know, like full H uh, HD aspect ratio 16 to 9, but I don't know, like we just go with like uh, 4K. So yeah, because it's just, just the still, it doesn't take so long to render. And then also where we save it. Yeah, guys, I think you should know it. Also PNG in 16 bit. Because, yeah, like if you do like in the post editing, like in the camera raw or in lighting room, um, then it's always better to use like 16 bits because you have like more color and uh, depth information and all that stuff. What is also very important is, yeah, like to um, use denoise beauty pass. So that's, it's how it will denoise it. That's why we can just go with thousand samples or maybe even less. And what I'm also always doing in that example, it's not so important, but, but if we check this render AOV group, guys, this is such a big part. Like if you want to learn about it a little bit more in depth, then let me know. I can do a tuto tutorial because like when you do like co complicated scenes and you want to composite like shadows and uh, to add like smoke with the Z depth uh, pass uh, to it, or just adjust like you have so much control over so much things so i enable it then uh, we have to uh, save it somewhere i don't know i just uh, save it here on desktop like uh, test and always in psd and it has to be a multi-layer file and i always hear denoise beauty so you have like in the psd file the denoise beauty file as well but what is important like you go to this render aov manager yeah if we then it should look something like that. And here you have, like on the left, I will show you, like a lot of different passes. And for example, like shadow passes, very good. Or post-processing, what we could also do, just uh, one second, what is, why this is so important. If we add on post-processing on the camera, like a little bit of, um, yeah, like of the bloom, you see, okay, for example, yeah, it's just uh, for demonstration purposes, but that doesn't look good. So you see, we have like a lot, let's crank that even up. We have like a lot of uh, stuff happening. It's, yes, it's a little bit too much. But if we would just render it out like that, just as a flat PNG and want to edit it in Photoshop, we don't have any control over that um, bloom effect. It's like burnt into the image. But 
If we enable like this render AUV group and go to render AUV and add those, uh, this post processing, you see on the bottom left corner here, we have like those different passes. For example, this is just the shadow pass. And here we also have post. And you see, this is only the effect which we get from like the bloom, uh, like the glow effect. And we will get it as a separate layer in Photoshop and we can adjust it and like play with the levels and make it more or less without destroying the, the image. Yeah, also, I don't know, like reflection is always good. In this example, it's not so happening, but um, yeah. Also, what I always use is object ID on, and material ID. If we go to the past, for example, like the object ID, like we, we see like every object has a separate color. And also with the material ID, like even here we have, okay, we don't have so much objects, but you see like every material has also its uh, own color. And that's also good because later in Photoshop, we can just select like the color and just make a selection around that object what we need. So this is super useful. Um, also, yeah, Z depth is also like one of my favorites. In this example, it's not so important because yeah, we, we don't have so much happening in the scene. We don't have so much uh, d uh, much depth. So yeah, I'm not going into it uh, so deeply right now because we don't have it. But you can also adjust like the level of uh, of the depthness. That's basically it. As I said, in this example, we will not need that really so much, but I will just show it to you. Then we can render it out. So we just also like save this file in somewhere. And yeah, then we can render it out and we, I will see you in Photoshop. Okay, so our render is uh, ready. And then we have like our PSD file on the desktop or where uh, you saved it and we just open it. And then we have something like that. Like we have our denoise beauty with all the different passes and everything on a separate layer. And that's awesome and perfect what we need. And often, yeah, we have like something, uh, if you make a, a preset of the different passes, sometimes you have something inside what you don't need, for example, like this uh, transmission. And so I just delete it. We have like, for example, our post-processing uh, passes. It's a little bit too much, but yeah, for that tutorial. So I disable all the others and I just uh, go to screen mode and now, you see, like we have it, but I have too much of it. I just want it a little bit sharper. So what I just do, I um, create like a levels adjustment adjustment layer and clip it just to the lower one and just bring the blacks a little bit down. So we don't have so much that washed out glow, you know, and we bring the whites a little bit inside and play a little bit with the uh, middles. So yeah, that's not the best example, but this is already much better. And we couldn't do it without the pass. Or for example, why the object IDs are good. For example, our cap would be too bright or too dark or something. We could just go to that layer, go to select and color range and pick this yellow here. And maybe make the fuzziness a little bit uh, higher. So we are selecting more also of the uh, blurred edges. And then we have a selection and we just go to our denoised beauty layer and just control J. And we have like our isolated cap super fast, very easy. And now we could, uh, for example, I don't know, curves adjustment layer and just, uh, yeah, play, play a little bit around. Yeah, something like that. Just a little bit more of brightness because yeah, the glass is brightness. Or the other way around, I want like the, the glass like a little bit sharper. So again, I go just to object ID to select color range and just, yeah, pick the purple one. Everything is selected and again to denoise beauty and just control J to duplicate only that selected layer. And we have that, that's awesome. And now we can again, just play with the curves a little bit, clip it to that and just, yeah, a little bit uh, contrast. And yeah, we also need a little bit of sharpness, but yeah, I like that. So yeah, you see, it's a little bit more contrast here, maybe too much, but I like it. And then we can add like this background. For that, um, yeah, we have our background layer here. We can basically use it and we just go to G and to gradient and we select like from the basics foreground to backgrounds, but we have to do the radial and then we have something like that, you know? And then in that example, I don't know, I just uh, go to the color here and with Alt, I have the uh, color picker and I just pick like, I try to get like some grayish color, but with a little bit uh, of color 
yeah something oh maybe here this one yeah exactly like we have this red uh, gray with a little bit of a gray tone and then we just x with switch the colors and in this one something darker from the image yeah something like that again just with the alt and color picker and, that, and then just with g x so we have like the bright part here and you see that's <laughs> that's already much cooler and i just like to bring a little bit of color into the gray, uh, gray tones or what just works and yeah that's just a lot of practice and a lot of experimentation like how to do gradients where to do gradients with which color like with the complementary colors and all that stuff i like that already a lot and now when we adjusted like more or less all of our layers, we create a new layer on the top and control shift alt E and we bring them all what is beneath the layer into one layer. And now we uh, work with all the layer in the camera raw or light room. So yeah, we can just click here on right click convert to smart object because if it's a smart object and we create, for example, like a filter or something that goes for every layer, then we can um, adjust it afterwards the layer again or we can delete just the filter so it's non-destructive so we make a smart uh, object and we go to filter and camera raw filter like here i do also like a lot yeah that example this render looks already very amazing but uh, yeah guys if you want check on my website or my portfolio like some renderings and what you want to see or learn or what you don't understand because then, yeah, I will do um, tutorials and also like I will always um, use like Photoshop in my tutorials so you can always learn a little bit. Honestly, I like the color temperature and uh, maybe make it a little bit cooler because maybe it is already a little bit too warm. And also like because red and orange and blue are complementary colors, it's good when you have like especially in that kind of uh, rendering when you have like very contrasty Colors and I don't know. I like this style. Maybe it's not like photo, super photo realistic, but it's like ultra hyper realistic kind of. I don't know. But I like I like when you have like this complementary from the colors, like the the liquids and like the highlights are like more warm. But you have like on the other side like the dark shadows, like for example like here. And yeah, we don't need exposure, but we need maybe a little bit of contrast. Uh, the highlights bring a little bit down because you see we are a little bit blown. Uh, we have a little bit too much and with P you can switch between before and after and yeah with the shadows we can play a little bit but what I also like always to add is a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity and you see this getting really extremely extremely sharp this glass I don't know it's maybe it's looking messy I don't know but it looks uh, some kind of cool so yeah, we don't need more vibrance or um, saturation because we have a lot of color already. Here we can adjust on the color mix a little bit the color. For example, if we would do the light in the rendering a little bit uh, not so good. So I want really like a yellow, orange and the red one. And yeah, maybe hey, the yellow is good, but maybe sometimes the render would be something like that and we could just boost a little bit of the yellows, guys. But don't boost too much the colors because that will look too unnatural and not so good you know sometimes also i don't know like if we have like uh, a scene with like a lot of happening i don't know like nature and we want to go with some kind of a particular style and we want to go with some kind of particular style it's cool like to delete kind of the intensity of, of color so we just have like for example like a red atmosphere or just a blue atmosphere you know so that you can also do like not in that example but um yeah, but we will come to it in the next tutorials. And color grading. That's also very important. For example, as I said, I, I said I want in the shadows a little bit more of a blue color. So I just pick this thing here. And yeah, you see like the dark parts just getting a little bit blue. But we just lead, need a little, little bit. So for that, I just press Alt. So we can go like with little, little steps. So yeah, just a little bit of the blue. And on the highlights, I will try just to bring with, again, alt click and dragging, like a little bit. We can bring it firstly to, to the max to see in which direction it goes. I even like those a little bit of purple color, maybe. So, yeah, we have something like that. And with P, yeah, it looks much better, you know, like because this one, the original one, it's, it's too red, too orangey, you know, but with this, we have like a nice balance of like the blue and red and that's really working good and then what i always do 
and I also say to you that always add a little bit of grain because yeah we do 3D and it can look too clean and we always want to add imperfections in the materials like scratches, fingerprints and all that stuff. And also like when we do an image, like yes, maybe if you do like with a super high end camera, then you don't have a like kind of grain, but especially in this kind of dark shots, we have, we need to add a little bit of grain because you see it is just absolutely too clean. And I really add uh, not too much, but like 30 or so. okay, this, uh, this is uh, too much, but yeah, 20 and you, you see, and you also get like this kind of a little bit of an old look. Maybe like for more realistic, maybe add a little bit less, maybe 15 or something. Because yeah, you have a dark background. It, it has to be like some kind of a little bit of a grain. You know, like without grain, this is, this is too smooth. It doesn't look good. But I like even to go with a little bit more as kind of an artistic style, like with a very old camera to do like this kind of very modern style shot. I don't know. And yeah, we could play with a vignette, but yeah, in this example, we don't need that so much. So yeah, I just press to OK. And if we compare before, you know, it's a little bit washed out. Everything is a little bit more red. And if you go to that, that's much more punchy, you know, and just like, I don't know, in five minutes or so. But yeah, again, like that's tutorial. I don't go in, into deep into all that. And also that's a very simple render. But yeah, if you check out like on my profile, but yeah, if you check out in my portfolio, like this complex scenes, it's of course much more work, but it's a lot of fun. Thank you so much for all that positive feedback you gave me on the first two videos. And yeah, if you want to grow with me, guys, I would appreciate it if you subscribe and like and we just go and do that together. And yeah, just let me know some feedback, what you want to see, what you want to learn and just feedback, like what I did good, what I did not so good. Enjoy your day.